Hello and welcome to the presentation of my PhD topic. My name is Bernhard Grasel and I'm lecturer at the University of Applied Sciences in Vienna for Renewable Energy Systems. I'm very happy to present you today my work about superharmonic emissions of a bidirectional electric vehicle charging station, uh, research methodologies and, and modeling. My supervisors are Mr. Battista and Mr. Dragner. In the following slide you see the uh, content of this presentation, motivation, objectives, then the description of the individual tasks, the schedule, curricular plan, and then also the collaborating institutions. Uh, what's the motivation? So in the uh, electric power generation, uh, we do see uh, a big change. So as uh, in the last decades, the, the electricity was generated in uh, a small number of big power plants. Uh, uh, today we are in the transition to, to carbon-free power generation, uh, which also means we, we are integrating right now a lot of distributed uh, renewable energy sources to the grid. On the left you see the, the power flow uh, as it uh, has been for the last decades. So we had uh, the power flow from the power generation plants, which are mainly connected to the transmission grid, uh, to the uh, industry and, and customer loads uh, in a unidirectional power flow, you can say. Uh, but uh, today and in the future, uh, this uh, also has been changing uh, as we are getting a lot of this uh, distributed energy sources and also the, the power flow will change. It's not only a one direction power flow anymore, it's, it's going in, in both directions and uh, also these renewable power sources will uh, feed in uh, to, the, to the transmission grid. The second big trend is the transition to carbon-free transportation and uh, almost all uh, countries uh, uh, focus on electric vehicles these days and these electric vehicles uh, uh, also need to be integrated to the electrical grid and this gives really a lot of new business models a lot of new applications uh, what you can also see on the right charge uh, right chart so this is for example vehicle to grid uh, applications uh, where the batteries the energy storage of all of these uh, connected electric vehicles uh, can support the electrical grid for voltage control frequency control uh, power control. Uh, it can be applications like a vehicle to business, uh, for example, um, to, to shave peaks, peak shaving, uh, demand side management application in industries, because you, you have a big potential of batteries uh, with the electric vehicles, uh, what you also can use uh, for your electricity in, in your industry or in your building. Also vehicle to home, uh, similar applications, uh, maybe uh, one, one main application will be to, to use the self-generated energy produced by your photovoltaic plant uh, and, and store it in the vehicle uh, and later use it again from the vehicle for the house or of course for the vehicle itself. And vehicle to load is, is maybe the smallest uh, application. That means you, you can uh, connect also any kind of equipment to your vehicle. So you, you will have power outlets, uh, you will have access to the, to the big battery pack and can use it for vehicle to load applications. And uh, yeah, bidirectional charging stations are not uh, only uh, allowing the charging of the vehicle, they also allow the discharge. And uh, this is the, also the, the focus of, of my PhD uh, thesis. So electric vehicle charging stations are sources of superharmonic emissions. Uh, today, uh, we only use uh, electrical equipment with highest possible efficiency. So where we in last decades uh, had a lot of uh, pure ohmic loads, ohmic inductive loads. Uh, today, uh, almost everything is controlled via power electronics. Uh, and you see that also on the, on the chart on the right, 
you see, uh, depending on technology we use, uh, bipolar transistors, MOSFETs, IGPDs, um, we will get uh, 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 several switching frequencies uh, in a very high frequency range. And this is a really new um, research topic because uh, uh, so far we mainly focused on harmonic analysis up to one kilohertz, up to two kilohertz, so 50 harmonics uh, at, at the maximum. And today we are really uh, talking about emissions uh, in a frequency range up to several uh, 100 kilohertz. For, for the conductive power transfer switching frequencies of up to 40 kilohertz, even up to 80 kilohertz are very popular. And for the inductive power transfers of our wireless charges, the switching frequencies are even higher. Uh, the effects of this superharmonics are thermal stress and reduced lifetime uh, to equipment connected close by. I will, I will also explain this a little bit later. Again, it will increase the losses of cables also due to the skin effect. It can lead to mall function of devices uh, close by. So, for example, if you have two electric vehicle chargers, it's uh, maybe not possible to operate uh, both at the same time. Or if you have a, a coffee machine close by, it, it uh, can happen that there are really uh, strange behavior that it starts uh, uh, cooking the water uh, without anyone pressing the button. Uh, yeah, so malfunction and also noise emissions. So, these emissions in the frequency range. 10 kilohertz is, is also something we can, we can hear. Okay, and the objectives of, of this work are the characterization of superharmonic emissions, uh, identifying the propagation of superharmonics, uh, determination of primary and secondary emissions. So this is uh, maybe the main, the main topics of this work. Uh, it's really a, a gray spot in, in research and uh, a lot of further uh, Research is, is uh, uh, rec recommended by a lot of organizations. And uh, yeah, this is also where I focus on my work. Uh, yeah, finally, we also want to create the simulation model and also want to uh, create the base for future simulation models. And we also want to identify effective mitigation methods. Okay, uh, the, the work is uh, split in several uh, work packages or tasks. It will begin with uh, solid literature research, so the investigation state of the art, uh, what other works are available about superharmonic emissions of electric vehicle char charging stations, but also any kind of other electrical equipment. The classification of emissions, uh, there are wide band emissions and narrow band emissions, what you will see also on the picture to the right. And we are also talking about primary and secondary emissions. So primary emission is what an equipment will uh, create an emission by itself. And secondary will be what it uh, uh, takes from other electrical equipment. So each, each equipment can be the source or also the load uh, of, of superharmonic emissions. And this is the reason why we need to separate between primary and secondary emissions. Uh, yeah, comparison of uh, existing modeling approaches. There are different uh, approaches uh, uh, out there. Uh, we want to optimize them, to improve them, also to compare them, and then also to, to give an overview about existing standards and, and measurement methods. So on the, the left picture, you see uh, also the, the standardization uh, in this high frequency range is, is not uh, uh, done yet uh, yet in, in some parts, so there are even, even areas of emissions which are not limited at all at the moment. Uh, the, the second task will be the measurement campaign. So we do have a bidirectional electric vehicle charging station at our university. Uh, we also do have a reconstructed electrical distribution grid, what you see on the left. So we really can operate the charging station in a lot of different topologies, operating points, and uh, therefore are also able to, to uh, understand the superharmonics, to identify them uh, uh, very good because we know, we exactly know uh, our electrical uh, grid uh, uh, and, and therefore also can, can really do 
detailed uh, investigations. And this is also done with uh, high-end measurement equipment like power quality analyzers, grid impedance analyzers, power analyzers. Uh, on the right, you see the pictures of the charging station and uh, in the middle also uh, some pictures of our, of our lab. Okay, the uh, task three will be to identify the propagation of superharmonics. So as mentioned before, it uh, could be the case that you have an electric vehicle charging station, what you can see here, which emits superharmonic emissions, which will be taken or which will flow uh, to equipment close by, for example, a TV or a lighting LED. And uh, this can lead to thermal stress of this other electrical equipment and finally can also reduce the lifetime um, cause a malfunction or, or destroy it. And here it's important to, to understand the propagation of superharmonics. And on the right, uh, the, the scope waveform of the voltages and currents you see is one example. So at, at this, this is the waveform of, a, of one electric vehicle charging station connected. And uh, a few moments later, we connected a second electric vehicle charging station and the waveform at the first one looked like this. So you see, uh, even if these emissions are not from uh, your vehicle charging station, they can come from another source. And uh, this is what we focus on in our research to, to analyze and identify. Task four is the simulation. Uh, simulation based out of the results of task two and three and the literature research of task one. Uh, we will use electronic uh, simulation uh, software and uh, yeah, the idea is to identify the main parameters and uh, also to uh, make the model as, as simple uh, as possible, so simplify uh, the models. Yeah, on, on the pictures you can see the, the uh, uh, structure of, of uh, electric vehicle charging station, which uh, consists of a input filter, LCL filter, then the uh, rectifier inverter part, depending on the uh, power flow direction, DC-DC converters and the high voltage battery. Uh, task five is the mitigation of superharmonics. So uh, uh, as, as soon as we know how they will uh, behave, uh, we can define uh, measures to, to counter to counteract them. And, and this could be local on a regional level or on a device level. Uh, this can also lead to suggestions for future standardization, for future product design, uh, for future grid codes. Uh, yeah, and, and this chapter should, should give an overview about all the different possibilities. Okay, uh, on this uh, slide, you will see the the schedule, as you can see, the, the main task will be task two and three, uh, which, which will take almost half of the, of the uh, work plan. Uh, yeah, then it's followed by task four, simulation, task five, mitigation methods. And the last part will be the thesis preparation. Uh, the curricular plan will uh, cover for me following options. Uh, electrical and energy systems management as option one. Two is communications, networks, and technologies. Three, signal processing and analysis with constraints. constraints. Uh, four is optimization and classification methods. Uh, yeah, and the collaborating institutions is, is my university, University of Applied Science, uh, Technikum Vienna, and of, of course also UTED. UTED. Yeah, these are the, the references. Uh, I want to thank you very much for your attention.